So you made the decision and you just spent your life savings on that spanking new mirrorless camera. And now that you own it, you're ready to conquer the world. There it is looking all shiny and black and mysterious. Like the Batman, fresh out of his cave in the silver light of the full moon. You're going to conquer the world with this new camera and you'll do everything within your power to keep this camera in top shape, physically and functionally. You're not going to treat it like you did your last camera, allowing it to gather dust and finger smudges and scratches. So this is what you're going to do. First, give it a good wash and tumble in the washing machine, just to make sure all the crevices and corners get a good clean. Make sure to use premium detergent and add some baking soda. Next, for a good polish, you're going to give it a few minutes in the dishwasher. Make sure to set to very hot and add some lemon just to give it that fresh scent. Afterwards, you're going to put it in the microwave to get rid of all those micro dust particles and coronas. And when you're done with this very important preliminary phase, here are some basic tips for keeping your camera equipment clean and making sure that they last as long as possible. Maintaining your camera is obviously very important to ensure that it performs very well and lasts a long time. And if you spend that much money on getting a very expensive camera, you might as well learn how to maintain it very well and improve your maintenance culture and your habits around maintaining your gear and keeping your equipment clean. So clean your camera. One thing that you can use is first of all to use like a blower to blow off dust and dirt off the surface of the camera and the equipment and the gear. So I got this off Amazon uh, or was it Temu? I can't remember but this is a blower. It's not charged now but yeah it does do a pretty good job of you know blowing air off. So this side is the suction side. This side is the suction side and then this other side uh, blows. I have something here that I can attach to the end. I put it on and I blow all over the surfaces of the camera, you know, blow into all the holes and crevices. Of course, make sure that the sensor area is closed. Same thing with the lens, make sure that the back of your lens is closed when you're blowing so that you don't blow dust into all the parts that dust shouldn't get into places that you can't touch with your fingers, like all the glass elements within the lens. And of course the sensor in the camera, the mirrorless camera like this and uh, the glass on the DSLR camera. So very good tip is to get like a blower there are manual ones that you can use that have a hand pump and so when you you know use it to blow on the surface of the of whatever it is you're trying to clean this thing is not charged i thought it was charged otherwise i'd have demonstrated right here the battery just seems to die quick these days first thing about buying cheap products sometimes they do well for a couple of months and then after a while they, they don't last so anyway get a blower to use to blow the surface of your equipment and uh, get all the dust off before you wipe. The next thing you can do is to get a microfiber lens, something like this, to now wipe the camera. So you use it to gently clean your cameras, use it to gently clean your lenses like I have here. This is the Sigma that I cleaned in the other video where I talked about how to restore faded lens rubber. And as you can see, this is a month, more than a month later, the lens is still looking like brand new and yes there were a lot of comments that talked about using detergent and after a while it begins to affect the rubber so far so good still looks like better than when i even bought it because i bought it used so anyway back to what i'm saying use a microfiber lens to clean the surface of the lens all around it the surface of a camera all your other gear and uh yeah so these this come in very handy they they usually come in whenever you buy like eyewear like glasses you get them and buy them online as well or in any supermarket or store um, but for fingerprints and smudges you know like maybe you get a fingerprint on the surface of the lens or you know some other spots you might want to use a lens cleaning solution for fingerprints and smudges now for the sensor cleaning it's advised that you use the camera's inbuilt sensor cleaning system if your camera has a sensor cleaning system so use your camera's sensor cleaning system regularly um, but for a more thorough cleaning, you need to use a sensor cleaning swab and solution. I personally, I don't like to go near my sensor at all because you should never directly touch your sensor with your fingers.
There's an automatic function where somewhere in the menu system you see where the camera, you know, menu system will advise or suggest how you can clean the sensor. Say to clean the sensor, you press it up, probably do a screen um, recording to show you how this camera does its sensor cleaning. So if I put it on right now, uh, somewhere in the menu system though, there's a cleaning function. Sensor cleaning, there's it. If you see here, not sure how clear it is, but there is a sensor cleaning system there where you can now click yes and it will clean. There are a lot of other common sense tips for keeping your camera and your equipment clean. First of all, of course, you keep your cameras and your equipment dry. So they need to be in a place where they are not exposed to splashing liquids or fluids. So don't keep them in the bathroom. Don't keep them in the toilet. Don't keep them in the kitchen. Um, so you need to store them in a dry place. And then you can even use moisture absorbing materials to pack within the bag to prevent humidity damage. Especially if your camera is not weather sealed. And even if it is weather sealed, you don't want to take the chance, right? Remember you bought the camera really quite expensive. You use all your life savings. So, you know, you could get some of this moisture absorbing um, material. Those little, little bags that absorb moisture. You find them in a lot of packaging. You can put them in the bag wherever you keep your camera and your gear just to make sure that they remain dry and they don't get damaged due to moisture. Sometimes when there's a lot of moisture and humidity, you can start to get a lot of fungus around some of this part of the lens and even within the lens. And, you know, it's it's a headache cleaning fungal, fungus and fungus stains from within a lens. I mean, that's something that you never really want to go, go and experience. And the other thing is to use a camera bag. There are several types of camera bags out there branded types unbranded types cheap expensive whatever it is just make sure that it's it's you know comfortably accommodates all your equipment without getting them to scratch against one another because you know by so doing you're going to damage the look of your gear and your equipment and you know you're going to reduce the resale value anytime you want to sell so make sure that your camera bag is you know well padded and all the compartments are well padded and keep things try to keep things organized in such a way your camera is in one part your wires and cables in another part batteries and other things in other parts so that it's easy to you know reach out for them and they're not scratching and rubbing against one another so use the right kind of camera bag if you want your equipment to last and be clean if you're not going to use your equipment for a long period of time you can remove the camera battery from you know from the camera that way you prevent your camera or your gear from getting battery damage i make this mistake a lot of times you know like i've not used my drone in a long time and i realized that i left my drone batteries within the drone for months and months and months luckily no damage you know those things are really pre pretty well made solid dji products so but you know it's generally good advice that any battery operated device if you're not using the batteries if you're not going to use that device for a long time you know get the batteries out and keep them separate so that you know just in case the batteries leak it doesn't leak and damage your equipment other general common sense basic best practice tips for maintaining your equipment is you know try to do firmware updates as often as you can if you use a laptop you know this is quite common that every now and then the system wants to update itself and so you know you need to make sure that you know you're checking out the websites for sony cameras canon cameras nikon cameras the lenses even some of the lenses have firmware updates dji like the osmo pocket 3 and osmo action 4 they're always updating the software every now and then both the mobile app and the actual camera software so basically just try to get into the habit of checking out for updates and updating the firmware or the software that you know operates your camera try to get them updated as regularly as possible also check the manual book what the manual book says about servicing your camera you know there are certain things that the manufacturer will recommend that you do to service your camera things to check and all of those things so that manual that comes in the packaging whenever you buy a new gear or equipment it's not just for you to dump somewhere. I'm guilty of that a lot of times. Every now and then, go through it and read and see all the parts of it that talk about maintenance and um, servicing. So that you know, you're doing what the manufacturer says is the best thing to do to keep your camera alive and well and keep your camera serving you for many years. Another thing you can do for your lenses is to use protective filters. So like here now, I have um, a variable ND filter. But there are other kinds of filters that you can put on your lens just to prevent anything from hitting the glass, the outer glass uh, of your lens. So you could use an ND filter like I have here. I have this constantly on on this lens. I had two, one for my other 85 millimeter, but I, I can't really remember where I kept it. But you could also just get a normal UV lens, you know, just something like that. And then another thing you can do to keep your lens protected is to use a lens hood. So here, this lens hood, as you can see, 
it's protected. Imagine if this was to fall now, you know, it's, it's to hit the glass directly, but a lens hood provides that added protection. So apart from just pre preventing flares from getting to your image when you're taking pictures, a lens hood also helps to protect your camera lens from getting damaged. And also very important is to make sure that you have your actual lens covers, all right? Very easy to get these things missing. You know, I've lost a bunch of them. I've had to order some recently on eBay. So yeah, just get like extra copies of the lens covers so that you can have one in your bag, you can have one in the house. So in case you forget to carry it or drop it somewhere, you have more than enough. And also make sure that the back of your lens, that when it's not being used, is always sealed. Make sure that anytime, maybe when you're switching lens, keep the sensor downward so that, because if it's upwards like this, dust can fall into it. So try to keep it down as much as possible when you want to put a lens on and be as quick as possible and get it in. Whenever I'm changing, switching my lenses, I do it as quickly as possible to prevent the possibility of dust. I don't do it in front of a fan, so make sure you don't do it in front of a fan or out where there's a lot of wind and dust, except if you're out in the field shooting and it's a very dusty environment, maybe in like in the no in northern Nigeria where you have Hamatan, you know, in those kind of instances, you have to be very careful. So sometimes what I do is I, you know, go within an enclosed space or just try to find a way to shield the inner compartments of the camera from any wind or dust that might be blowing around. So that's another tip. So like I said, avoid extreme conditions. If you're, if it's out raining or snowing or windy and dusty, you have to be extra careful when doing things like swapping lenses and bringing out your lenses and opening all those sensitive parts of your camera and your lens. So try to know your camera gear. Not all cameras are waterproof or weather sealed. So you need to know the capabilities or the limitations of your camera so that you don't go out in the rain one day or try to do street photography and then water is entering into all the parts of the camera and the lenses and it gets damaged. Use the right cleaning agents. I know there were a lot of comments in my last video where I talked about restoring the faded rubber lens rubbers of your lenses. And some people liked the idea, the suggestion I gave of using detergent to clean the body of the lens. And some people balked at the idea and they were like, are you crazy? If I one guy actually said, I'm crazy, it's ridiculous. How can you use detergent to wipe the lens? Um, but hey, it's worked. Like I said, look at the lens, still looking good. See the other one, looking clean, looking fresh, no damage to it so far. But hey, still do your research. A lot of people have recommended more professional grade cleaning materials. So I know that there are a lot of liquids out there and cleaning fluids and um, cleaning devices that are specifically meant for this kind of rubber material that they use to make lenses and also the kind of material that they use to make camera bodies. So do the research and find out the right one to use. Make sure you have it at home and uh, you're using it maybe with a little clean cloth like this and you just wipe it and make sure that, you know. And so basically, I think it's really all about habits, you know, trying to maintain the regular habit of cleaning your equipment regularly. I think what really helps is number one, be organized, right? Have a camera bag, a shelf where you keep all your camera equipment. Don't let leave it all scattered around the place. I'm very guilty of that. Often, sometimes, maybe when I'm so busy and distracted, you have cables and lenses and everything lying about. It's not a good practice. It's good to have a dedicated space in your house or in your studio where you keep all your equipment. Have the lenses in one place, have the camera game in one place because when it's organized and well kept that way, it's less likely for things to fall off, get missing, be misused. And then when you have that system of organization, the next thing is to have a regular system of cleaning. Get to know your camera, read the camera manual, the manufacturer's manual, know the ways things should be cleaned, um, know the sensitive parts of a camera that should never be touched, like the sensor, the inner glasses of your lenses. Keep your cameras and gear in a humidity-free environment as much as possible because whenever there's humidity, it can lead to fungus and other humidity damage. Um, when you're not using the cameras or any battery power device, take the batteries out and keep them away. And um, yeah, I think those are some of the basic tips around maintaining your equipment. So if I missed anything out, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. Tell me how you habitually keep your camera equipment and all your gear clean and how you maintain them so that they last very long. Tell me even your terrible, sad stories of maybe how you were careless and you know some expensive equipment got spoiled. I've seen people lose cameras worth thousands of dollars because maybe they were, it was left on a tripod. You know, so things like buying weights to hold your tripod down is a wise thing to do so that your tripod doesn't tip over and damage your camera. You know, when you're not using your camera, don't leave 
the flip screen out, always shut it back in after you finish recording, you know, things like that, I think will help you to maintain your, your gear and equipment and make sure that you don't lose all that hard earned money that you used to buy the equipment. I hope this video has been helpful. Please do not put your camera and your lenses and any of your camera equipment into the washing machine or dishwasher or microwave for that matter. Don't say I told you to do so. You're just kidding around. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to the channel, helps me, encourages me and helps me to think of more interesting content to put out there. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.